Hey everyone, it's just Dr. Andrew War here. Um, recently, I just put up a little post about um, hysterectomy and when a hysterectomy should be considered. And I've talked, of, and it's obviously gained some discussion around this. And I've talked about this much before about hysterectomy, especially to do with endometriosis. Um, and I always say to people that a hysterectomy doesn't cure endometriosis, never has, never will. And that's a medical fact, it just doesn't. Um, we know that women that have had a hysterectomy and have endometriosis, um, many a surgeon have gone back in um, and, and found the woman riddled with, his, with more endometriosis. So it doesn't cure it. If it was the cure all, then that would be great. It'd be a simple solution in one way. I don't mean that in a bad way, but um, at least women, <clears throat> once had they had all their child bearing um, out of the road, they could opt for that and then they would cure their endometriosis, but that's not what happens. Um, we also get told, a lot of women get told that when you go into menopause, your endometriosis is going to go, and that's partly to do with the whole hysterectomy, you're going to menopause, and, um, which is not true completely either. Um, but that same sentiment that you, you can't have endometriosis when you're in menopause, well, that's a load of BS. There's, again, I uh, can show you numerous times and numerous research papers on um, surgeons going in and um, finding a woman riddled with endometriosis, um, menopause in the menopausal area and also post hysterectomy. So I wanted to come on and talk about it because one of the things I see a lot is I've got a lot of women that come to see me that are struggling with life, um, they're tired, they're anemic as hell, like they're constantly anemic and they're just struggling from day to day to day to day. And then that affects their emotions. Some of them are borderline on that whole suicidal spectrum. Um, some of them are borderline depressed. And then we've got all sorts of mood disorders that go with it. And their quality of life is pretty, pretty bad. Um, and... The problem is that often when you present a solution to them, due to previous misconceptions and preconceptions and, you know, um, perception is reality, they think that if they go and opt for a surgical option that all these horrible things are going to happen to them. They've got all these horrible things in their head. But yet, at the same time, they're living a pretty horrible life. And... They're doing it based on a lot of things that aren't fact. So this is why I wanted to come in. So it wasn't so much to talk about the, the whole endometriosis stuff. I know people want to hear about that. If you do, I've got a previous post on, on this of why a hysterectomy doesn't cure endometriosis. And then I also have a follow-up video um, so explaining why it doesn't as well. So... If you're one of these women that has endo and being told that a hysterectomy is going to cure your endometriosis, well, it doesn't. What I will say, though, is, and I've talked about it, and then I've got those videos there, and I'll put the links up as well um, under this, um, this blog when I put it up as well. So you can go and have a look. It saves me talking, rehashing it. But what I will say to some of those women is that some of the women with endometriosis don't know they have a condition called adenomyosis. Now, adenomyosis is pretty much histologically the same as endometriosis. They're one and the same disease, basically, except adenomyosis is confined into the uterus. Endometriosis isn't in the uterus at all. It's, it's endometrial-like tissue but it's not your endometrial, <laughs> it's endometrial-like tissue, so it's normal tissue growing in abnormal areas. That's the best way to explain it. But sometimes some women, and this is why we have to talk about endometriosis, not just being about period pain, because it's not. Some people don't have period pain. Some, um, actually a significant portion of women with endometriosis are asymptomatic. Don't have, they wouldn't even know they had it. And then they could be riddled with it, it could be stage four, riddled with it, not have any symptoms. That's fact. That's why the staging system, um, you know, pain 
isn't related to the extent of the disease, and we've got to stop telling people it is. We could have stage one as with more pain than a stage four. So the staging system is just for a surgeon to know how much is there um, and classify it. But what, what I'm trying to say is that sometimes when people are looking at hysterectomy, is that some people, all their symptoms are based around their period and having their menstrual cycle if they have um, endometriosis and so forth. And some of them, when they do have a hysterectomy, a lot of their symptoms dissipate because the uterus is now gone, they're not getting their period, and a lot of their symptoms will go. But <laughs> they still have endometriosis, which then could be growing on their bowel, causing problems on their bowel, and all these other things, which are still part of endometriosis, where you get endo belly, you know, this big inflamed belly. Um, some people just have bladder issues. Some people have digestive issues. Some people have bleeding issues. So it's a big, big thing. So that's the only thing when I'll say with endometriosis with hysterectomy is that for those people where it's all menstrual related, it can help with that, but you will still have endometriosis. And a lot of them think that because of their, a lot of their symptoms are gone, they don't have endo anymore. So that's what we've got to get through to people. You still have endometriosis. Once you've got it, you've got it for life. Uh, it does, it's not cured. There's no such thing as cure for endometriosis. But there is a cure for what we call adenomyosis. So one thing that a lot of women that have endometriosis have also got adenomyosis and don't know. And they've never had it diagnosed, so they just constantly think they have adenomyosis. But then again, I see the other side of it where we have women with adenomyosis confined in here, don't know they have endometriosis. So, and it depends who they see. So this is why you need to see an advanced trained excision surgeon for all um, to do with endo and adeno, no one else. Advanced trained excision surgeon or don't see, don't see the person. Um, they have to be an advanced trained excision surgeon. And let's not forget that those advanced trained excision surgeons not only do extra surgical training, to keep their advanced training status, they have to do a certain number of surgeries a year to maintain that. So they're the best of the best. And they also specialise. So you see someone that's an advanced trained um, excision surgeon or laparoscopic surgeon, um, and um, they specialise in things like adenomyosis, endometriosis. So that's what you want to see. So an advanced trained laparoscopic surgeon or that it specialises in the excision of endometriosis, not just an advanced trained excision surgeon. I need to make that one clear as well. Um, so when we come to things like adenomyosis, one of the things I see a lot is that women that don't realise they have it, adenomyosis again, is exactly the same as endometriosis, but it's confined into the uterus and it usually gives a lot more bleeding symptoms. And the uterus is often quite bulky. So when we look at it under scan, you can actually see that it's quite bulky. And by doing high contrast ultrasounds, we can see through the uterus and it looks like a Venetian blind. That's what it looks like through on the imaging. Um, often looks like that from adhesions and where it's causing um, issues through that uterine environment. So it's deep within the uterine tissue itself. But histologically, when we biopsy, take it out, it's exactly the same as endometriosis, but it's confined into here. But endometriosis is out here. Um, and it can be in your brain, it can be in, I mean, you know, in, we know that it's been around the pericardium, the heart, the diaphragm, the brain. It's been found behind the retina. They've found in the little fingers. or It can spread all through the body. And that's why you use the C word, the cancer word, because that's about the closest you'll come to what endometriosis is in the way that it functions and moves and spreads and stuff like that. It's like cancer, but it's a benign form of cancer. But it's an inflammatory disease still. So... Um, that's what we need to, people to understand. But getting back to adenomyosis, I see a lot of women coming in here that are struggling day after day after day after day from this heavy menstrual bleeding. And you could have heavy menstrual bleeding from other conditions like pelvic congestion syndrome and all that as well. 
Um, and there are ways around that, you know, the embolization and things like that. But at the same time, you have to be very careful of doing things like embolization and also ablation, um, especially if you haven't had your children, because basically it's the surgical removal of part of the endometrium and the basal layer as well. Um, and it's stopping you from having, a, it can stop you from having a period, um, definitely, and it can render you infertile. So people have to remember that as well. Same with the, um, the um, artery embolization. There's lots of issues that can go wrong from infections and all kinds of stuff. Um, you just have to be very, very careful. And this is why when we're now just talking about hysterectomy, the other thing with embolization and um, ablation is a lot of the time women will end up needing a hysterectomy after that as well. So I'm often very cautious about telling women to go and get those procedures when I know full well that probably over half of them are going to end up with a hysterectomy anyway, which means another subsequent surgery. So do you do the embolization? And or do you do, you know, the ablation or do you go straight to a hysterectomy? Because a lot of the time, as I was saying, it ends up that anyway. But getting back to the whole women that are bleeding, like I mean heavy bleeding, pad after pad after pad after pad after pad, after pad and then they're constantly anemic. Now, I think anemia is probably the one of the most underdiagnosed, mismanaged things I'm seeing with women lately. And it's actually disgusting because it's actually dangerous. And again, I've written posts and I'll put it up on here again. And why I'm adamant with people about getting infusions as well, because if your iron is so low, no amount of iron tablets are gonna bring that up. And I've seen women on iron tablets for 12 months and it hasn't even put a dent in it. And all the while, these women are still struggling and the damage that can do from hormones to your bones, to your osteoporosis risk, the effect that it has on your hormones, um, your energy, um, it causes people to be shortness of breath. The other part, let's face it, if you're that anemic and you can't function and you're passing out, how would you like to be responsible for passing out on a freeway or a highway somewhere in your car and killing someone? Because that can happen. Or killing yourself or driving off a road. It's, it's really dangerous to be anemic or and low in iron. Really, really dangerous. And it's just not managed well enough. So iron infusions take 15 minutes. They're done. I don't care what anyone says. Um, or oh, I've had a reaction or blah, blah. The reactions are rare, um, but the benefits are really high. Um, so, and I mean, every good practitioner will discuss anything with you like that anyway. But getting back to this post, this post is about when a hysterectomy, you know, you should consider a hysterectomy. And that's when your menstrual cycle or your bleeding and every other symptom that you've got going on is affecting your life to a point that you can't function. Now, we have to be real again, as I said, for the endometriosis, that hysterectomy is not a cure for endo, and your endo will still be there and still could cause you other symptoms. But when we're looking at adenomyosis, it's a definitive. That's the cure for it. And it will stop your bleeding, give you your life back and all that. Let's not forget that if you've got a lot of bleeding issues going on, let's not forget that there could be other things going on. Obviously, we always have to exclude pregnancy, ectopic pregnancies, because you can die. Um, but then there's cancers too, because a lot of women that have all these gynae issues are at high risk of certain cancers as well, we now know. And you don't want to keep thinking, oh, or being brushed off and say, oh, that's, oh, that's just your endometriosis, or it's just that, or it's just your period, or oh, that's just what women go through. 
and you've got cervical cancer, endometrial cancer, ovarian cancer. You know, that's really, really bad. So this is why proper investigations are very, very important. Blood tests and that uh, do not diagnose a lot of the cancer. Uh, they don't, there's no definitive diagnosis. That's why we need a laparoscopy to diagnose ovarian cancer, endometrial cancer. You know, that's the prop way to do it because the CA125s and the tumour markers aren't accurate. We know that some people have got advanced stage cancers can have normal CA125s and so forth. So this is what I'm trying to say to you. So if this is you, forget what your friends, your family, sure, you take them into consideration, but let's just say that this is your life you're living that you get up every day, you're short of breath from all your iron and all the other stuff that you've lost. Um, and you're constantly having to have iron infusions and struggle to get out of bed and emotionally you're downtrodden and all that kind of stuff. That's when you need, and you've got, we know you've got adenomyosis or you're bleeding constantly. You've had all your children and you've gone through your fertility and stuff like that, that's when you need to consider a hysterectomy to get your quality of life back. Because I see it so often. Years ago, I used to... Or, and you always... I'll come back to this in a minute, but I used to be not so, proactive, not so pro about hysterectomies and surgical interventions, but now I know a lot better <laughs> um, for various reasons. But I also see that a lot of women that come in that have had adenomyosis especially and heavy bleedings and, you know, just can't function in life, come back and said, I should have done that 10 years ago. Forget the endometriosis because there's still women that have hysterectomy and they're still in pain, they've still got the... Because the endo's still there. But adenomyosis, most definitely a lot of them come and say to me, you know, really, I've, it's got my life back. And no matter what anyone tells you and your personal perception, your viewpoint, we can't discount the fact, despite it's taking out a uterus, and I understand all the reasons why someone wouldn't want their uterus taken out for many different reasons. And yes, I am a man and, and I probably know I, I don't understand what it's like to have a uterus. Um, but I can understand how, what it would feel like. And I also have patients that explain it to me what they feel like because the attachment to this, which is really, and don't take the person, and please take the person, it is really a vessel to carry children. But at the same time, you know, what do we have to weigh up the uterus that, you're now no longer not going to use as something to carry children or get a quality of life, your sex life back, your just normal life, being able to function because that's what it can provide. It really can. And I see it time and time and time and time again. Regardless of your personal view, that's exactly what happens. So it's about giving women informed choice because... Hysterectomy isn't what it was 20 years ago or when your mother and all that might have had theirs. It's nothing like that now. A lot of the procedures, as long as you get an advanced trained bloody surgeon, get the right person. Don't just get anyone to do it. This is where you've got to find the right people. It's like every profession. The, the risks are very minimal now. Um, like any surgery, it always carries a risk and your doctor should um, refer you to the AGES website or somewhere give you literature and explain all that to you. That's really important. But at the benefits for a lot of people is their quality of life back. And that's what I'm more about because, you know, these people that trudge in here, or I've got friends that are calling me at the moment and, and I know that's what they actually need to do because they've done... That's what I was coming back to. 
I'm always for the conservative management of everything. So we do medical management or conservative management or complementary medicines and that multi-modality approach I said, throw everything at it and see if you can help minimize the bleeding and all the impact on you. Now, if that works for you, fantastic, because that's what the main aim is. And that's what you always want to go to as your first port of call, because that's my first port of call with any of my patients. It's always say conservative management first, then if that doesn't work and you've had this so long now and you've already had, you know, five laparoscopies and you're constantly having infusions and you're weighing up, you know, what to do and you've had an ablation and um, you're back bleeding again, your only option now is a hysterectomy and it can give you a life back. We've got to stop putting the negative on it as well. And that's what I'm trying to talk. This is about the positives of a hysterectomy rather than the negatives. And especially for women with adenomyosis, it can really, that are bleeding and constantly anemic and can't function, it can bring your life back. Now, it's not saying that it can't help women with the endometriosis to get just period related symptoms. Yes, it can help you too. It can help you with some of the bleeding and it can stop all that. Um, you can understand that, but you will still have endometria. You've got to understand that it's not a cure for endo. Now, the other part with hysterectomy, we have to uh, talk about that there's two types. So there's called a partial hysterectomy and then it's a full hysterectomy. So a partial hysterectomy is basically just taking the uterus out and we leave the ovaries behind. A full hysterectomy, I've talked about it before, is taking the ovaries, all the structure, the cervix, the whole lot. So the whole lot comes out. Um, so there's a difference. So there's a partial and there's full. They're not all the same. So people need to understand that. Because a lot of the time now, they will leave the ovaries behind. So then you're not going into true menopause. But in one way, you are in menopause because menopause, meaning period, stopped. Um, but you're not going to go into those menopausal symptoms where you might have hot flushes and all the symptoms of menopause because you're still got your ovaries, you're still secreting it stuff like that so that's what a lot of them do now so that you don't go into true menopause and you will go into menopause as you would normally um because you've still got your ovaries and all that there sure if the ovaries are gone you've got a full hysterectomy you're into what we call chemical menopause and um, the whole lot's gone um then you might have to look at estrogen replacements and stuff like that um that's a whole other issue i don't want to talk about at the moment but again, for those that are sitting on the fence, which I know a lot are, just know the facts. So just remember, hysterectomy doesn't cure endometriosis, but it can help you with endometriosis symptoms, especially around menses and bleeding and things like that. It can help that, but you'll still have endometriosis. It's not a cure for endo. For adenomyosis, that's a different story. It's a cure for adenomyosis. And a lot of women have endometriosis and adenomyosis combined. And then some have PCOS as well on top. And some have never been diagnosed and don't even know they have adenomyosis. So if you're getting heavy bleeding, a lot of heavy bleeding symptoms, that's probably one of the defining factors between endometriosis and adeno. Basically the same, they get the same symptoms. Everything's the same except adeno will cause more heavy bleeding. All right, um, so again, if your quality of life has got to a point that you just can't function anymore because of the bleeding, like some friends of mine and some of my patients say, you know, they have to sit on the toilet and they're basically hemorrhaging, that's not a quality of life. That's not life quality at all. And I'm sorry, but just taking iron tablets and, and you've done everything else, you've taken the pill, you've put a marina and you've done ablation, you've done all that kind of stuff. Honestly, I just, as I say to people, a lot of the time with ablation, it's gonna end up in a hysterectomy anyway, so you're better off going straight to a hysterectomy rather than an ablation. If you want the definitive cure for adeno, um, then it is a hysterectomy. 
and that's where it should be considered. So this was what this post was about, to talk about it, give people choices, inform them, then you can go and talk to your surgeon, like advanced trained laparoscopic surgeon, as I said, or, um, and or your GP or work out um, what you're gonna do next and then your GP can help you find a, an advanced trained laparoscopic surgeon and make sure they do. <laughs> if not, you can come to see people like myself and we'll help you on all that level too. So it's, you've got choices. And that's what I'm all about, educating people about choices. And forget what others say. And if you've had a history and it's helped you, then fantastic. Forget what people say. They don't live your life. They don't have to struggle each day. They don't have to wear the surfboard brick pads, you know, and or they're stuck on a toilet somewhere. Just... And don't go back into the past and, oh, yeah, but they're like this and that. And it's not like that anymore. So talk to your healthcare professional. Talk to your surgeon. Discuss all your concerns. And if you, they don't listen, then find someone else. Always be prepared to get another opinion. All right, I hope that's helped you all. Um, I hope it hasn't confused everyone. Um, I look forward to your discussion on this. Um, and as I say to anyone, if anyone needs any help in that area, they can always book in for a consultation um, or give my staff a call and find out how I might be able to assist you in any women's health issues um, and assisting you in my network of people. All right, I will talk to you soon. Hope that helps. Um, thanks for listening.